We've all made some questionable purchases in our lives. Whether that be a late night shopping spree on Amazon that results in the next day delivery of a banana slicer, or the continual justification of those mood changing light fixtures you just bought. A full bank account can lead to some strange financial decisions. Now, of course, these purchases pale in comparison to the extravagant things that those celebrities in Hollywood and beyond have purchased. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with the 10 weirdest things famous actors did with their money. Number 10. Nicolas Cage bought a stolen Mongolian dinosaur skull. Now this list probably could be dedicated solely to the weird things that Nicolas Cage has bought over the years, which includes a haunted mansion and an actual medieval castle. But Top Spot probably needs to go to his acquiring of a stolen Tyrannosaurus bitar skull in 2007. Now, the skull originated in Mongolia and Cage purchased it for a whopping $276,000 which is probably actually quite a bargain when you consider that it was a stolen, real-life dinosaur skull. Even more strange is that he was only able to successfully purchase it after winning a bidding war against none other than Leonardo DiCaprio. Now, if that doesn't sound like the plot for the next National Treasure film, I don't know what does. Now, what he used the skull for, nobody knows, and he did end up having to return it to US authorities in 2014, where it was then returned to Mongolia. I mean, it was stolen after all. So the skull now resides back in Mongolia, although Cage and the auction house weren't charged for any wrongdoing, which is kind of strange when you consider how illegal the smuggling of fossils is in Mongolia. And also, that wasn't the first dinosaur that that gallery had sold. They previously sold and bought an entire dinosaur skeleton. Clearly, somebody hasn't seen Jurassic Park. Number nine, Bono bought a $1,500 plane ticket for his hat. Now, this story can be taken one of two ways. Either it's an extremely funny mishap or an overly egregious abuse of excessive wealth. Either way, Bono purchased a first-class plane ticket and taxi fares to and from the airport in London and Milan for his hat. Apparently, the U2 singer just couldn't perform in Pavarotti's Italy concert without his vital costume piece. And being one of the biggest selling rockers of all time, money wasn't really an object. Now, some reports say that the hat had its own first class seat. Other reports suggest that it actually rode shotgun with the captain himself. Now, the ticket itself cost around $600, but when you add taxi fares and the insurance for the hat, yes, that's right, the hat has insurance, it came to an eye-watering $1,500 for a hat. Now, it is quite impressive that he did manage to get the hat all the way across the Atlantic Ocean in time, but I'd really like to be a fly on the wall when someone was explaining to those taxi drivers that this was a genuine request and they were going to be ferrying around a hat and it wasn't some sort of YouTube prank. Number eight, Dan Aykroyd, Crystal Head Vodka. Dan Aykroyd, actor, check. Writer, check. Vodka salesman? Check. Yep, that's right, Dan Aykroyd owns a vodka company. And yes, he does plug it like he's some sort of shady Russian oligarch, but this is the guy that gave us Ghostbusters. So if distilling potatoes is what he wants to do in his retirement, who are we to stop him? Now, if the story ended there, it would be weird enough, but stranger still is his choice of name for his brand. The drink is called Crystal Head Vodka, and wouldn't you know, it comes complete in a creepy skull-shaped bottle designed by Aykroyd himself. Now, this all comes down to the actor's fascination with the 13 crystal skulls, which, for those of you who don't know, is a theory about ancient aliens who came to prehistoric Earth. And yes, they are the ones in that terrible Indiana Jones film. And yes, Aykroyd is a full believer in the ancient aliens that came before. And yes, the vodka is reportedly very good and available worldwide, so bottoms up. Number seven, Bill Gates, Da Vinci's Journals. Now, considering he was once the richest man in the world, there aren't actually that many stories of Bill Gates doing weird things with his money. Probably one of the most notable accounts is when he purchased Leonardo da Vinci's original journal, known as the Codex Lester, for $30 million in 1994. Now, that's around $56 million today, so you'd hope it came with an English translation. Now, most of the topics covered in the journal are da Vinci's notes on the movement of water, Fascinating. Uh, but it also touches upon astronomy and the moon and also his fossil theory as well. 
No mention of the Ninja Turtles though, now that would have added some value. Since then, the Codex Lester has been translated and put on display in numerous galleries and museums, but Gates' contribution probably came best when he had it digitised for the public in 1997 to CD-ROM. Just another example of Bill Gates being a charitable, just all-round swell guy. So shame about all the conspiracy theories that he's some sort of lizard who wants to control the world. Number 6. Lady Gaga, a ghost-busting machine. Who are you gonna call? Lady Gaga, apparently. Lady Gaga apparently paid $30,000 for an electromagnetic field meter for the sole purpose of detecting spirits and ghosts from the afterlife. Now, the machine, along with a hired team of expert paranormal investigators, no, seriously, are employed by the pop singer to sweep any hotel, tour venue, or other residence that she's going to stay in for evil spirits, of which she is terrified. It's also been reported that she believed she was haunted by a ghost called Ryan during her Monster Ball tour. Now, if I were an all-powerful evil demon spirit, I probably would have gone with a scarier name than Ryan, but whatever. It's also been reported that she allegedly paid $40,000 to a NASA-trained scientist to design some of her costumes. Now, that really does put her season of American Horror Story into new light, doesn't it? Number 5. Johnny Depp, a private island. Yep, you heard me correctly. Johnny Depp owns a private island like he's some sort of B-movie supervillain. The island is called Little Hall's Pond K and it lies within the Bahamas region. It has six beaches that are all named after someone special to Depp. These include Gonzo, which is named after journalist Hunter S. Thompson, and Brando, named after Marlon Brando. And no, before you ask, there is not one called Tortuga. Now, the island reportedly cost $3.6 million, which actually isn't that bad when you consider it's a literal island. In fact, the private yacht that Depp purchased in order to get to the island reportedly cost even more than that at $8 million. See, it's always the commuting fares that get you. Now, if all of that wasn't bad enough, the Pirates of the Caribbean star, who is literally now a sailor of the Caribbean, reportedly spent $3 million, or $5 million if you ask him, to shoot that aforementioned Hunter S. Thompson's ashes out of a cannon. Why? God knows, but apparently it's what he wanted. Number 4. Akon, a diamond mine. Possibly the most unethical purchase on this list, Akon confessed to purchasing an actual African diamond mine in 2007. Confess being apt here because up until that point he ardently denied those claims, which included accusations that the diamonds were in fact blood diamonds. Now for those not in the know, blood diamonds is a term used to highlight the negative effects of the trade, and can also refer to diamonds pulled from war zones. If you've seen Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler or Die Another Day, chances are you're familiar with the concept. Now there's nothing wrong with a little jewellery purchase every now and then, but sourcing your own bling by taking advantage of Africa's natural resources resources and workers is a little sketchy to say the least. Now, nobody but Akon or the miners can say for sure whether these diamonds are blood diamonds or not, but considering he is on record as saying that he doesn't even believe that blood diamonds exist and that they're just something you see on TV, you can see why people got a little bit concerned. Oh, and he also has a petrol station in his house, so let's not even begin to speculate where he gets his oil from. Number 3. Paris Hilton, a mansion for dogs. Dogs are great. No one, apart from maybe a few people with allergies, is denying that. But a two-storey mansion for a couple of chihuahuas? I mean, come on, Paris. The mansion, which cost around $325,000, was revealed in 2009 and is modelled after a Spanish-style villa complete with air conditioning and a chandelier. A chandelier. For dogs. The walls are, of course, pink, even though dogs are colourblind, but why put logic into the equation when you're designing a mansion for your dogs? And if you're ever feeling too good about the state of the world and you need a bit of excessive wealth porn in your life, then fear not because Paris's four-legged friends have their own Instagram account, where the mansion and the everyday life of these lucky, lucky canines is shown off to the curious and probably quite baffled public. To be fair, I don't know why we didn't see this coming, considering the sheer number of paparazzi shots of these poor little creatures being put into a handbag like some sort of fluffy fashion accessory, but this is a whole new level of weird. Kind of puts the phrase in the doghouse into a whole new perspective, doesn't it? 
Number two, Brad Pitt, a Soviet tank. Yep, a tank. Because when you're Brad Pitt, why the hell not? The only real surprise here is that it wasn't the tank from Fury. In fact, it was actually a prop used on the set of World War Z, a legitimate Soviet-era model that was disarmed to be used in filming. Now, the actual cost of the tank was never revealed, but you can be sure that it did cost a pretty penny, especially when you consider that he had to have it shipped from its home in Budapest all the way to his residence in Los Angeles. Now, what he uses the tank for? Nobody really knows, but considering there haven't been any news reports of a tank rolling down the streets of Hollywood, it's probably more of a talking point more than anything else. Number one, Mike Tyson, a solid gold bathtub. This one's like a parody of what rich people would think to buy, but then again, that's Mike Tyson for you. Now, with the invention of the shower, even normal bathtubs aren't a necessity anymore let alone one that's completely made of solid gold. Now, for those who are curious, the bath is exclusively made of 24 carats, because if you're going for useless extravagance, you might as well go all out. Now, as I'm sure you've guessed, this wasn't cheap, and it set Mike Tyson back $2.2 million. Now, the bath might be for cleaning, but I'm sure all of that expense left the retired boxer feeling rather dirty. But to be fair, the guy's one of the biggest names in all of sports, let alone just boxing, and even transcended the world of sports to become a cultural icon. He's made a name for himself in films and other media, so really if anyone's gonna pull off something as tacky as a gold bathtub, it's gonna be Mike Tyson. Although, to be fair, he does also own three Bengal tigers and a face tattoo, so maybe not the best judge of financial investment. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.